justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open or what you conceived. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome again to the inevitable journey. The last episode we give in the Ummah, the glad tiding of the emerging of a leader who will lead the Muslims, insha'Allah, to another state that is different than the state that they are in it right now. Brothers and sisters in Islam, because of the Iman, because of the faith of that group of people, under the leadership of this Imam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will empower the Muslims again in earth, not because of their material strength, not because of any other reason, but because of their Iman, because of their faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will empower him and empower the Muslims again under his leadership as an Imam Muslim compiled in his Sahih. Hadith Utbah ibn Nafi'a radiyallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Satuftahu, the uh, peninsula of the Arabia will be conquered. And we mention the hadith, hadith al-Imam Muslim that is narrated by Umm Salama, Aisha, wa Hafsa radiyallahu anhum, Ummahatul Mu'mineen, the mothers of the believers, brothers and sisters in Islam, also Bergia, also the Rome, the Romans, also it Dajjal, the Antichrist. Again, I want to warn my brothers and sisters in Islam that this time will be a time of a lot of trials and tribulations. A time when your Iman must be elevated. You must build a, a, a mountain of faith in order to be able to help the cause of, the, uh, of Islam at the time and in order to protect yourselves from the fitan, from the trials and tribulations. With this, as we quoted in the last episode, that Imam al-Mahdi and his emerging into the life of the Muslims will be the connecting sign, a sign that will indicate the coming of the major signs of the day of resurrection, the first major sign of the day of resurrection, which is the Antichrist, or al-Masih al-Dajjal. Brothers and sisters in Islam, again I want to warn you that Al-Mahdi, Al-Dajjal, the second coming of Isa alayhi salam, and also Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Gug and Magug are connected signs. And there is a connection between them. And insha'Allah in one of the episodes, after we introduce each character, we did introduce the character of Al-Mahdi last episode, Inshallah, this episode, we want to introduce, we want to introduce the character of the Antichrist. And inshallah, <clears throat> maybe the next episode also will continue talking about the Antichrist. And then the following episode, we will talk about Al Masih, alayhi salam, Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salam. And then after that, bi ta'ala, we will connect the events together for you just to have a clear picture of how all of them will somehow rhyme together. You see, the emerging of, it, of Al-Mahdi is a reason for the Dajjal to come, and the death of the Dajjal is going to be in the hands of Isa alayhi salam, and the coming, of Dajjal, uh, the coming of Isa, or the second coming of Isa alayhi salam, will be the indication that Ya'juj and Ma'juj, two tribes, Gug and Magug, two tribes are under a wall that was built by Dhul Qarnayn, as uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quoted for us in Surah Al-Kahf, will come out and actually finally dig out of that 
wall and they will come and they will cause huge corrupt corruption in earth so all these signs are connected together but with this inshallah today we would like to start talking about the major signs of the day of resurrection and listen to this Al Imam Muslim rahimahullah compiled hadith Hudayfa ibn Asid al Ghifari رضي الله عنه who said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appeared one day while we are and the companions are sitting down and talking about something. Let's find out what the companions are talking about. So Rasul, the companions are sitting down and they are talking about something. Then Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appeared to them suddenly or showed up to them suddenly. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, ما تذاكرون? What are you studying? What are you talking about? Look at them. Look at that group of, of companions. Look at the generation of Muslims. What did they say? Ya Rasul Allah, natadhakaru sa'a. We are talking about the day of resurrection. We are talking about the day of reckoning. We are talking about the hour. You see, these companions, the reason behind their success, brothers and sisters in Islam, was their hearts are so attached to the hereafter but at the same time their limbs in this world are working to produce a harvest that will qualify them to receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to be in Jannah bi'idnillah and that is the one difference between us and them look at them they are sitting down and they are discussing the hour here is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them innaha lan ta'ti the hour will come until you see Ashra ayat, ten signs. One, Ad Dukhan. Two, Ad Dajjal. Three, Ad Daba. The smoke, the Antichrist, the beast. Tulu Ashamsi min Maghribiha. The sun rising from the west. Four, Nuzula Isa ibn Maryam. The second coming. Of Isa alayhi salam. A lot of Muslims are not aware of this. And the non-Muslims need to be educated about this. That we as Muslims believe that Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him, will come back. Eight. Well, we said at Dabba, one, the beast, the smoke, Antichrist, the sun rising from the west, four, five. The second coming of Isa alayhi salam. Six, the Gug and Magug, Khuruj, Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And three landslides, Wathalatha Khusuf, Khasfun bil Mashriq, one in the east, one, land, one landslide in the east, Wahasfun bil Maghrib, one, one landslide in the west, Wahasfun bi Jazirat al Arab and one landslide, one landslide in the peninsula of the Arabia and then the last sign will be fire that will come out of the middle of Yemen that will drive people to their place of gathering. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet in this hadith, he did not place these signs in order. Actually, there is another hadith in Sahih Muslim. And again, the same narrator of the hadith, Hudayfat ibn Asid al-Ghifari, radi Allahu an, where the Prophet sallallahu where Hudayfa narrated and quoted the same hadith with a different order of these signs. There is another hadith also that is authentic out there that also places these signs in a different order. The consensus of the scholars over this issue, they said that the major signs of the day of resurrection, and this is the view of Al Hafiz ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, the author of Fath al Bari, the book that explains Sahih al Bukhari. Al Hafiz ibn Hajar al Asqalani said that based on the hadith that we have, the text from the Sunnah, the major signs of the day of resurrection are two groups. The first group is it Dajjal, the Antichrist, the second coming of Isa alayhi salam. The third, the third one 
is Ya'juj and Ma'juj coming out. So this is one group. And most probably this group of signs will happen first. Because the Dajjal is tied to Al-Mahdi, which is considered to be a minor sign or a connecting sign or a middle sign. As for the rest of the signs, we know that the beast and the sun rising from the west are the two signs that once they emerge, the tawbah of the Muslims will not be accepted anymore. يَوْمَ يَأْتِي بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكْ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ أَوْ كَسَبَتْ فِي إِيمَانِهَا خَيْرًا the day when some of the signs of Allah will emerge, these signs are the sun rising from the west and the beast. وَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلُ أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَّةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا لَا يُقِنُونَ And when their time is up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring out for them a beast that will speak to the human being, letting them know, that they were uncertain, they were not aware of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those two signs, Iddabba, the beast, and the sun rising from the west, they will happen almost in the same day. And most probably will happen after those three signs, Iddajjal, they will happen after the Antichrist and the second coming of Isa alayhi salam, and also the emerging of Ya'juj and Ma'juj because these signs will be indications those two signs the beast and the sun rising from the west to the fact that the world is about to end because we know from other hadith that right after the coming of Isa alayhi salam and after finishing up with the Dajjal and after he establishes the Sharia in earth earth will have the best years almost uh, there are some wording out there that there will be a thousand years of uh, a good life. Earth will actually give its best produce. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fi Imam Ahmad, the hadith is Sahih, he said, Tuba li'ayshin ba'da al-Masih. What a good life will be after the second coming of the uh, al-Masih alayhi as-salam, uh, Isa alayhi as-salam. So, inshallah, we'll take a short break and we'll come back and we'll talk again a little bit about the order of these signs because it is very important for us to understand the order of the signs of the major signs of the day of resurrection before we embark on talking or we start talking about the first major sign which is the antichrist or al nasih al dajjal take a short break we'll be back assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh the scale of justice will be broke before man Justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole lifespan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back to the inevitable journey. Brothers and sisters in Islam, before the break, we talked about Hadith Hudayfa ibn Asid al Ghifari, radiyallahu anhu, the Hadith in Sahih al Imam Muslim where the Prophet ﷺ listed 10 signs for the day of resurrection, which are considered to be the major signs. And we were talking about the order of these signs. It is very important to realize that there is no hadith that indicates the exact order of the sign, except the hadith that we have, where it does indicate that the last sign that will take place is the fire that will come out from the middle of Yemen and it will drive people to the place of gathering. As for the rest of the signs, we do not know. But Imam al-Hajar and others, Al-Hakim Abu Abdullah Naisaburi, had their view and they were their views and they were supported by other eminent scholars of this Ummah. Here is what Ibn Hajar said that it the Jal, the Antichrist, the second coming of Isa alayhi salam, and also the uh, 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 and Ma'juj, uh, appearing of uh, the appearance of Ya'juj and Ma'juj again, they will be following Al Mahdi and they will be the first signs that will happen in earth and they will happen one after another. 
And by the way, this is the nature of the major signs in general. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-amaratu kharazatun manzumatun fi silk fa'in yuqta'a silk yatba'u ba'duha ba'da. The hadith is uh, compiled by Imam al-Hakim fil Mustadrak min hadith Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anh. He said the signs of the hour are like beads placed, placed in a, a, a string. If you have a necklace, you know the beads, when you cut or uh, that uh, st uh, string gets uh, torn, uh, then the beads will fall down one after another. Uh, you will find out as we explain, Al Mahdi emerging. Then the Dajjal will emerge. Then Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam will descend. Then Ya'juj and Ma'juj will uh, they, they, they will come out. So these signs will, will happen. And then earth will take a break from trials and tribulations for a long time. Maybe a thousand years after the uh, uh, coming of Al Masih alayhi salam and him establishing the Sharia of Islam and him ruling according to the Quran and the Sunnah, finally, and following the footsteps of Imam Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Mahdi, then earth will have its best years. It will give its best harvest, and it will be uh, very uh, uh, pleasing years for the people who end up past the trials and tribulations that will precede this. Brothers and sisters in Islam, then, you see, Faith again, Iman again, Islam again will start descending. Imagine this, right now we are here with the coming of Al Mahdi, Isa alayhi salam, the curve will go up again, up. And, and, and this is the promise that me and you are living for, brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant his deen another term of success because of the commitment of a few numbers, Ta'ifa, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called them Ta'ifa, a few of the Muslims in Hadith Jabir fi Sahih al-Imam Muslim, radiyallahu an Jabir, brothers and sisters in Islam, then after that, people will start again forgetting about Islam, forgetting about the deen, Jahiliya will emerge again, and that is when the other signs will start gradually appearing. The two signs that they will follow one another is the beast and the other one is the sun rising from the west and once those two signs emerge then the repentance of people will not be accepted anymore and then the other signs will start coming but now we do not know when the three landslides will occur we do not know when the smoke will occur but we know the last sign will be that fire that will come out from Yemen and it will drive people to their place of reckoning or place of gathering Brothers and sisters in Islam, the first sign today is it Dajjal, Antichrist. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as the Imam al Bukhari wa Muslim compiled Hadith Abi Huraira, radiallahu anh, that he used to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the fitna of the Antichrist after each tashahud in the salah. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma and the hadith of Sahih Imam Muslim. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to teach the companions this dua like he used to teach them the surah from the salah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adabi jahannam. I seek refuge with you from the punishment in the graveyard, in the punishment in the hellfire. Wa a'udhu bika min adabi al qabr. I seek refuge with you from the punishment in the graveyard. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْمَحْيَةِ وَالْمَمَاتِ I seek refuge with you from the fitna of life and the fitna of death and I seek refuge with you from the fitna of the Antichrist. Brothers and sisters in Islam, before the Antichrist, there will be a lot of fitan in this ummah, but the Antichrist will be the greatest of them. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about the amount of fitan that will happen before the Antichrist. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the hadith of Sahih Imam Muslim min hadith Abi Huraira radiyallahu anh Badiru bil a'mali fitana ka qita' al-layl al-mudlim Hasten with your good deeds before trials and tribulations that will be as bad as the dark, the patches of dark of nights 
Now, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam described the conditions of the Muslims, of the believers. A person will wake up in the morning a believer, and at night he will turn into kufr. يُصْبِحُ الرَّجُلُ مُؤْمِنَ وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا وَيُمْسِي مُؤْمِنَ وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا And at night he will be a believer, and in the morning he will be a kafir again. يَبِيعُ دِينَهُ بِعَرَضٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا He is willing to trade his deen. He is willing to, tr to sell his deen for a little bit of this dunya. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described also a condition of a believer who is so keen on being amongst that group of Muslims who are sticking to the truth regardless of the amount of trials and tribulations as the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in Hadith Jabir ibn Abdullah fi Sahih Muslim radiyallahu anhuma the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق. They are working hard to be on the truth, regardless of the amount of trials and tribulations that they go through. Look at the condition of this person, brothers and sisters in Islam. Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم said, القابض على دينه كالقابض على الجمر. The person who is holding his deen is like someone who is holding a piece of fire in his hand. Brothers and sisters in Islam. Keep holding that piece of fire in your hand. At least it's burning right now, your hand. But if you let go, it may burn all of your body in the graveyard or all of your body in the hellfire. قُلْ نَارُ جَهَنَّمَ أَشَدُّ حَرَّ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Tell them that لَوْ كَانُوا يَفْقَهُونَ Tell them that the heat of the hellfire is hotter than the heat here. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Another description, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding the reaction of a believer to the fitna and him striving hard to be amongst that group of believers who are seeking, seeking and striving, working hard to be amongst that group of believers. الرجل, a person will, will pass by the graveyard of another person and he would wish that he is in his place, escaping the fitna. Brothers and sisters in Islam, fi Sahih Muslim, Hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, radiyallahu anhuma, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day, he, in one of the battles in his way, he called upon the companions, and he delivered to them a sermon, and he said, no prophet before me, the meaning of which, no prophet before me, but he told his people regarding what is good for them, and warned them regarding what is bad for them. And indeed, the best years of this ummah will be the first years. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ جَعَلَ خَيْرَ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ فِي أَوَّلِهَا نعم, yes. خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي The best of years, the best of people is my generation. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ Then those who follow them. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ Then those who follow them. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued by saying, وَإِنَّ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ And this ummah, towards the end of its term, they will have a lot of fitan. A lot of fitan. A fitna will come to a believer and he will say, this fitna will destroy me. I will not be able to pass by this fitna. I'm done. This fitna is killing me. It's over. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift that fitna away from the believer because of his commitment to deeds, to working according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the other fitna will come and he will repeat the same thing. This fitna will destroy me. This fitna will destroy me. And then another fitna will come. And this, this fitna will be lifted. Another trial, another tribulation will come. Harder than the first. And it will pass too. Because that person is holding fast to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, look at the description of these trials and tribulations. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and the hadith is recorded by Imran ibn Husayn, fi sahih, and also other companions, hadith Abi Umamat al Bahili, radiallahu an, fi mustadrak al Hakim, there is no fitna greater than the fitna of the Antichrist. There is no fitna that ever emerged in the face of this earth than the fitna 
of the Antichrist. And all the prophets of Allah have, have warned their people regarding it. And I'm doing my job too. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is warning you regarding this fitna. Some of you will be sitting out, will be sitting down right now and hearing me and saying, what are you talking about? This is not going to come now. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Nuh alayhi salam warned his people regarding the fitna of the Antichrist, regarding the trial and tribulation of the Antichrist. Insha'Allah, the next episode of the inevitable journey, we're going to talk about the Antichrist. And again, remember, keep up with me because later on, we're going to connect Al Mahdi, we're going to connect the second coming of Isa alayhi salam with the Antichrist together. And later on, we will connect Ya'juj and Ma'juj till the next episode of the inevitable journey. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open of what you conceive. From big to small shall today. Your deeds shall then be weighed in a scale. This shall determine if you pass or fail. Heaven and hell shall be brought into vision. Allah alone shall make the ultimate decision. To all brothers and sisters, I'd like to say, I'd like to say, ask for forgiveness and do that today.